Praise God. It's good to see you guys. God, Brother Kai, Brother Matthew here. We're talking about probably the most hotly debated topic in the Word of God. Amen. And that is, are we eternally secure in our salvation? That means, can we at all depart or lose our salvation? Mm -hmm. Or is our salvation 100% secure? Meaning, no matter what we do, we cannot fall away. Amen. Absolutely. I do believe that we cannot lose our salvation. And I have scriptures. Well, we have scriptures on both sides. Yes. And I'm going to go over the scriptures on determinism versus free will. Do I believe we have free will? Yes, we have free will in a certain extent on we're going through a maze. And until God actually reaches down and grabs us, we will never find him. That The Bible says we'll, we'll never search for God. No one seek it after God. Right? So... So before we start, let's just let's see where we stand here. So bro my brother Kai over here is going to be on the eternal security side. He does not believe we can lose our salvation. No. Over here, not. now everybody already knows where I stand on this. See, this is not you know a mystery. Okay, I'm obviously on the other side here. I uh, I believe that there are many warnings in Scripture against going back to the world, going back to sin, you know, departing from the living God. So I'm on this side. Or the Kai's on this side. Now, we are going to have a little discussion here. At the end of this video, you need to decide. We're not going to persuade. We're, we're bringing forth our arguments for each. You're in the middle right now. You have to tell us at the end where you stand on this issue. What I don't want you to do <laughs> is at the end of the video say, well, I'm right in the middle. I, I'm just right here. You know, I just don't know. I'm right here. There's no being on the fence here, okay? It is either one or the other, okay? We are either 100% secure, and there's no way we can go back, or we can go back, and we need to fear God, okay? Wait, let me rephrase that. Not about going back and shipwrecking your faith, but you can never lose Okay. The free gift of God that is given without repentance. Okay. So you can turn back to your vonnet. You can turn back, but you can never lose the free gift that God has given you in the Bible in Ephesians 2.8. So but you we'll want talk to start about. making, you want us to go ahead and start? Yeah, I'll make that. Go ahead and thing. start with okay, that, yeah. okay? So we'll talk about eternal security, okay? And the actual God's will versus free will. All right. So the first thing is John, John 10, 29 says that no one can pluck us out of the Father's hand. John 10, 29. All right, next, Romans 9. If you ever look into Romans 9, okay, Romans 9, 14 through 17. This is actually really big for Reformation, the Calvinist. You look at the will, God's will for your life instead of the free will that you think you have, okay? Romans 9, 14. It is not of him that will it, or it is not of him that wills, not man's will. It is God's will, okay? Next. 2 Timothy 4.18, God will preserve, meaning perseverance of the saints, preserve me unto heaven. Okay? Next. That's 2 Timothy 4.18. Yeah, 2 Timothy 4.18. He will also preserve me in his That's heavenly right. kingdom. Amen. Amen. Might be blameless. Yes. 1 Corinthians 1.8, the Bible says God will confirm you to the end. Okay? If you are a child of God, God will confirm you unto the end. The end of time. The end of everything. God will confirm you. All right? Next, Hebrews 13, 5. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Let me, let me re re rephrase that, all right? If you're a child of God, if you are God's sheep, God will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you, okay? Okay, next, Philippians 1, 6. He shall perform a good work until the day of Christ, meaning God will work in you until the day of Christ, and he will raise you up on the last day. All right? Next, Romans eleven twenty nine. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Let me just re repeat that. The gifts, meaning God has given you gifts. One of the number one gifts that God gives you is, guess what? Eternal life, meaning God gives you salvation. It's a gift unto God. It can never be given back to him. It can never be forfeited back to him based on Repentance. It says that it's it's given without repentance, meaning he doesn't take it back. The gift and the callings. Okay, we focus on the gifts right now. That was given in Ephesians two. Next, John six thirty nine. 
the Father's will, Jesus will lose none. The one that the Father gives, Jesus will lose none of them. The ones that the Father gives them. Okay? Next. What is this, brother? Jeremiah 32, 40? Mm-hmm. God will, I don't know what you wrote on top of your brother. No, this one is Jeremiah 32, 40. It says, God will put his fear into the children of Israel that they shall not depart from him. Amen. I mean, that's one of the arguments for <laughs> eternal security. Is God is yeah. going to cause people not to depart mm -hmm. by putting his fear within him. So, All right, 1 Peter 1, 5. We are kept, kept by the power of God. Kept. kept. Salvation. God keeps us through his power. Okay. And that's pretty much everything on top of here. Um, before I get done, the biggest thing is, remember, it is a gift from God to have salvation. Yes. It is only a gift of God. But the Bible also says that that gift cannot, all right, be given back. It cannot. It's without repentance, meaning he's given it to you without repentance, all right? Where does that thing go to then if it doesn't go back to God, all right? It's without repentance. All right. Okay. Go for it. So on the other side of the spectrum here... We are going to look at the warnings concerning going back. And what does that really mean? So Colossians, and I didn't have it written on here, but I'm going to write it right now. Colossians 1.23 tells us to continue in the faith. Continue. That's very important. Because the whole concept of the Christian walk is not necessarily how we begin, but it's how we finish. Okay, remember in the parable of, in Luke 8, the parable of the sower, a sower went forth to sow a seed. Now, there are many seeds that fell. Some of the seeds fell by the wayside, they were taken by the birds. Some of them fell on the stony ground, it had not much earth. Some of them fell among the thorns, the thorns came up and choked the word, and it became unfruitful. So, it's not how the seeds began to go out, it's did they become fruitful. Okay, it's not how you begin, it's how you end. It says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, it says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 18 uh, talks about uh, repentance concerning a nation. Uh, if the nation will repent of the deeds that are being, that are God, that if, if they repent of their wickedness, then God will show them mercy. And you can read through Jeremiah chapter 18. In the parable of the debtor, in Matthew chapter 18, uh, the, the man was forgiven all of his debts. All of his debts were forgiven. Uh, 10,000 something talents. Uh, he went out tried to get his fellow servants to exact 100 pence from them. What happened? That man was re-accredited with his uh, debts and that man was thrown Back to the tormentors. And that is a picture, I believe, of going back to sin and ultimately being reaccredited with sin. Uh, 2 Peter 2.20 talks about the dog returning to its own vomit again. Uh, the pig that was washed to its wallowing in the mire. Uh, Hebrews 10.26 talks about trampling underfoot the Son of God and clowning the blood of the covenant wherewith you are sanctified, an unholy thing, and doing despite the spirit of grace. So taking God's grace and abusing it, uh, not living it out. Galatians 5.4 talks about falling from grace uh, because you were seeking to be justified by the law. So this was written to the Jews that were going back under the law in Galatia. Paul was warning them, if you do that, you are taking yourself out of the covenant of grace. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 120 talks about uh, being shipwrecked. Hymenaeus on Philetus. I believe that you cannot be shipwrecked unless you have a ship. They can be shipwrecked. you got to have a ship before the ship can be shipwrecked. Okay, That ship represents our salvation being wrecked upon the rocks. Departing from the faith. Uh, first Timothy chapter uh, one, or first sorry, sorry, first Timothy chapter four one talks about in the last days many shall depart from the faith. So I believe as long as a person continues in faith, they are eternally secure. I would agree with my brother Khan. As long as a person continues in the faith, grounded and settled, and has not moved away from the hope of the gospel, 
They are eternally saved. I would agree with my brother. Okay? In 2 Peter 3.17, it talks about falling from your own steadfastness. Falling from it. We are in it. We, are, we have faith. But the, the question is, are we going to continue in it? Uh, it says in uh, John chapter 15, verse 6, it says, If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and they are withered and then are burned. That's why we are told again and again, we have to abide in him. Abide in him. Uh, this is probably one of the best arguments right here. 1 John chapter 2, verse 24 says, If you continue in the Son and in the Father. So the whole theme on the non-eternal security side is the word continue. Over here we have the word confirm, preserve, perform. These are the key words about God's eternal security and keeping us to the end. Over here, God's telling us we've got to continue. Now, Hebrews 6 talks about apostasy. I'm not going to dig into that too much. That's for people that are really deep in the faith and then go back. Romans 11.22 talks about there's goodness for those that continue in his goodness. There's that word continue again. That word continue, common theme. 2 Timothy 4.10, uh, 4, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Commanded not to love the world, none of the things that are in the world. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, talks about, Let us therefore fear, having been left a promise of entering into his rest, some of you seem to come short of it. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, talks about the children of Israel lusting after the things in the wilderness, going into idolatry, doing these sins, committing fornication, rising up to play. Uh, Jude chapter 1 verse 5 says, after he took the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward he destroyed those that believed not. Okay, so... These are just really, really key verses. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 talks about receiving the grace of God in vain. In vain. What does it mean to receive God's grace in vain? It's really speaking to the time at which it's received. Uh, it has to be received in the accepted time. That's why he said now is the accepted time. Uh, so if you... Uh, push it off and push off salvation for so long and then you try to reach out to God he may not be sovereignly drawing you at that time okay Revelation 3 5 talks about uh, um, you know your name being blotted out of the book of life okay you see, God said I won't blot your name out I personally believe everybody's names in the book of life until it's blotted out Revelation chapter 3.16 talks about spewing out of the mouth of God. God will take the lukewarm and he will spew them out of his mouth. Okay, Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 says, Beware, brethren, lest there be found in any of you a heart, evil heart of unbelief in departing, key word, departing from the living God. What does that mean? Departing the presence of God. I have nothing to do with God. I don't want to do anything with God. I'm leaving the faith. So I believe as long as a person stays grounded and settled, and like it says, this is the key verse, Colossians 1.23, as long as they remain grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, I believe they will be preserved. They will be preserved blameless unto the day of the Lord Jesus. Amen? That's my side. Go ahead, brother. Meaning they got to work for it. All right. So here. <laughs> All right. So a couple of verses that he brought up. Revelations 3, 5 actually says this. Okay. And he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment and will not blot out his name out of the book of life. How do we overcome it? With Christ. Christ alone. In grace alone. Through faith alone. Okay. So 3, 5 is not talking about blotting it out. 
Okay? Only through Christ can we be saved. It's only through the grace of God that we are saved. And without that, we have nothing. All right, next one is this. If you look at a verse, um, turning back to its, uh, his vomit in Second Peter, if you go up a couple of verses, it talks about a man named Lot. Peter calls him a righteous man. If you know anything about Lot, guess what? Lot was not a righteous man. In my eyes, he actually slept with both of his daughters. It never says that he repented of his sins. We don't even know if he repented of his sins. But did God already know him since the foundation of the world? I, I think he did. But anyways, on that part over here, we talk about shipwrecking your faith. I do believe Christians can shipwreck their faith. Ship, shipwreck their, their, their faith. But I definitely do not believe that they can lose their salvation. I actually don't see any part inside there that says actually L-O-S-E, lose uh, salvation. On, on any parts of that. So we can agree to disagree. Um, I have Armenians. I've served with Armenian preachers before. I actually served with Brother Matthew at, at an Armenian church. Um, and the biggest argument is this. You see, if they're right, they're right. And even if they're wrong, they're still right. You know, that was the argument that was there. Is Even if we're, we're erring wrong. erring on the side of caution. Yeah, they're erring on the side of caution. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I'm erring on the side. I'm, I'm going with by grace alone, by faith alone, that I'm saved. Um, and yeah, I, I, every morning, if I could lose my salvation, I, I probably would every single morning that I wake up. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my argument on that side. But yeah, God bless. My brother <laughs> brought up a really good verse, though. He, he, he mentioned uh, that we're not saved by works, which is really important because I actually 100% agree with him. We are not saved by works. Paul writing in the book of Romans says very explicitly that by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. That Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Nobody is saved by the works of the law. Now, that being said, in the book of James, chapter 2, and if you're reading in verse 14, you come across an interesting verse. Okay, It talks about how the Abraham and Rahab were both justified by works. Very interesting, very interesting passage, because you're like, wait a second, that's a total contradiction. Not entirely. It talks about Rahab and Abraham being justified by works, but what works were they justified by? Was it works of the law that they were justified? No. They were justified by works of faith. And then people had to say, well, what is a work of faith? Is faith actually a work? It's not a work. Faith is akin to trusting in God and believing in God. And by performing that act of trust and belief, they were fulfilling an act. Now, if you, it was called a work in the book of James. But in reality, it's not working for it. It's placing your faith in it. They were performing an action that proved and demonstrated the faith that they had. They were I performing mean, I, I an action that demonstrated holds. their faith. Okay? We believe so that. So it was a time. work. It was a work of faith. It was a demonstration of that faith. A Amen. demonstration. Amen. Yeah. So we, the, we, we believe that eternal security, we still believe that, James 2.14. And the reason why I say that is because, yeah, once you're saved, the thief on the cross, when he got saved, right? Some Romanians don't even believe that the thief on the cross is saved. When the thief on the cross got saved, if he got off the cross, he would live a holy lifestyle. He will look for the things of God. He will look to be sanctified. Holiness. All of these things, John 17.17, 17, sanctify them with thy word. Jesus would confirm him all the way unto the end. So we believe in the, there is a work, there is a faith-based work that happens in someone's life. And you shall see them by, guess what? You know what else scripture's not up here? A good tree doesn't, guess what, produce incorruptible go. fruit. It can't. There you go. You know, there is no perfectionism within Christianity. Once you're saved, you produce good fruit. So we do believe in James 2.14. I do believe that. Sanctification and holiness. Absolutely. That happens after. There's many false conversions and many people that are not saved. The Bible, the Bible never says a sheep turns into a goat. There's goats and sheep. And the Bible says that what? The sheep knows what? God, they know the, the Lord's voice. And they do the things of God, right? Yes. The goats don't do that. So I do believe that there's false conversions. Decision regeneration is not biblical. And yeah, but we do believe in, believe in that. James 2.14. 
So in Jeremiah chapter 13, it says, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the left of his <laughs> spots? So he's talking about being changed. Yeah. Now listen, even though I am a person that believes in man's free will, I will come out and admit it. I believe man has free will. Man can choose to obey or choose to reject the gospel. Okay. It is true. It is true biblically, according to John chapter 6, verse 44, that no one can just come to God unless he is drawn by the Spirit. Amen. I agree. It is very clear that God's hand and God's sovereignty is definitely 100% evident in man's salvation. There's no question about this. Okay, there's no arguing about it. God's sovereignty is 100% in the salvation of man. Now, the question is, are you a monolist or a synergist? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that it is God simply grabbing a man and pulling him into the kingdom of it, heaven, kicking and screaming? God grabs. God grabs a man, grab. kicking and screaming He's into the kingdom screaming. of God? He's not screaming. It's called irresistible grace. I've actually had this happen to me before I was even saved. But yeah, the hand comes up, God grabs it. We don't grab God. Uh, is, it, <laughs> is it God grabbing a man against his free will, dragging him into the kingdom? Or is it God offering the hand of salvation and man reaching up to take hold of There's mind. a difference of his perspective of, of free will. So the free will, we all have free will. Everyone has free will, but our free will is a bondage. It's a cage that we actually live in until God actually brings us back to life. No one, the Bible says no one seek it after God. You will never seek after God unless God draws you Amen. to him with the with Father. And the Bible with. says that the Father, right, right. that anyone that he gives to Jesus is in him, and he'll see him on the last day. Okay? He'll see him. So, man obviously does not seek after God. 100% depraved. It takes God's sovereignty to grab a man, to give that, to offer a man the opportunity to be saved. That is going God back, that is going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, where I was talking about before, how we, people are receiving the grace of God in vain. Meaning a Amen. person who lives their entire life wanting to be apart from God, wanting to be separated from God, not seeking after God, and then on his deathbed saying, oh, I'm going to pray the prayer of salvation. No. See, that is receiving the grace of God in vain. It will have no effect on them at all. None effect. Yeah, I do believe that God puts people like the thief on the cross was meant for God's purpose. I do believe Pharaoh was put in for God's purpose. Everyone is on the earth to do God's purpose before the foundation of the world even started. It was God's purpose for Pharaoh to this what? Kill. All, all the kids have to get killed during that time. God made that happen. The thief on the cross, God made that happen. It was all in God's perfect plan. The, main, the, the key argument that I'm going to base my belief on is the argument that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let me finish my point, my brother, and then you can come in. As long as a person remains in the faith, remains believing that Jesus Christ died for their sins and rose again from the dead, as long as a person remains believing in the gospel, they will be saved, they will be confirmed at the end. The issue, <laughs> the issue is... Does a person stop placing their faith in Jesus Christ alone? Demas was a man that I believe was called by God, was a helper of Paul, and he departed. He went back having loved this present world. He lost his faith. How many is it? Right, the same thing. Brother, I got one. Shipwrecked the faith, brother. They, Let's they look at the prodigal son. Faith. When the prodigal son, if he never came back, was he still the son? I'm going to just take this from this Carter. This is from Eric Carter. Yeah. <laughs> so the, was he the son? Yeah, was he still the son? All right. If he never came back, the prodigal son, was he still the son of God? He, he never claimed that he wasn't the son. Okay. Like Judas was it. also called the son of perdition. Okay. So Judas was a son, but he was a son of perdition. So, this was called for a purpose. <laughs> we can have a little bit yeah. of juice. But here's the thing. You see, um, 
he, I, he's bringing up a good point. Are we unregenerated not to become part of the family of God? Yet Judas, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, was called a son of perdition. In lose his sonship, he lost his faith. He lost his faith in Jesus Christ alone. And so we go back to looking at these scriptures and the warnings associated with what? Continuing in the faith, grounded and settled. That's the key. That's why he said in Hebrews chapter 3.12, Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. Look what it says, brother, in Hebrews chapter 12. He said, Lest there be in any of you a fornicator such as Esau, for one morsel of meat, sold his birthright. He sold his salvation. He sold his salvation. He sold his salvation away. He sold his salvation okay. away. So he sold his salvation. That's what he did. Talking about selling his salvation. For the things of the world. world. The Bible says that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Those who he loveth, he chastiseth. Remember this. Those who he loveth, you're beloved by God, he will chastise you. If he's not chastising you, you might not even be truly saved and you might be having decision or regeneration inside of you but you need to inspect your fruit really are you really saved or not saved because you can see it the bible says that you will guess what you will produce good fruit if that's not happening in your life you might really want to look at repentance and faith and really really think of that it says in hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 it says see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. It says, Looking diligently, lest any man fall, fail of the grace of God, lest there be in any of you a root of bitterness springing up, lest therefore many be defiled. So what comes up? The bitterness, the anger towards your brother. What, what did Jesus say? If a man does not forgive another man of their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive his trespasses. That's going back to Matthew 18. The man was forgiven of all of his debt, yet he would not forgive the people that were indebted to him. And because of that, his debt was not forgiven. So, is it dependent upon our obedience and faith? I do still assure you, on this side, I'm still on this side, but I love my brother Kai. We've been brothers for years. We're going to be continue to be brothers. But I believe it is by obedience and faith that we continue grounded and settled and be not moved away Amen. in the hope of the gospel. I believe you can shipwreck it. And I do believe that the grace of God, it's by grace of God that you're even saved. And without that, you have nothing. And there's, there's, it's just straight mercy. And I like to go to Romans chapter 9. Okay. Verse 16, the Bible says that, uh, For he has said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, mm -hmm. and I will have compassion on who I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that sheweth mercy. It is not your will, okay, to be saved. It's not. It's God's will for your life to anyone that believes on the gospel. Meaning those who believe. It's God's will. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, Look but in the that context. all <laughs> should come to repentance. It's not God's will that anyone is lost. That is why I believe it has to be free will. The Bible says because broad God, is the gate, broad is the gate, and many, many are going to go there. But what does that mean? Many will see, will, will, will find that broad gate. Um, there are people that are going to hell. God. God never wanted anyone to go to hell, but why does it say that in the Bible? That it's a broad gate. It's a broad way. It's a broad. It's broad. There's a broad way that people will go to it, and many. The Bible says many will be there. It's not God's will that any should perish. Does God any. know how many people are in heaven? Does God know how many people yes, are in heaven? Yes, the hell? number he may does know. Does he know the, the number? Individual, he leaves that up to the individual. Okay, I got to you. But if there's a number, will believe in the gospel. <laughs> Amen. Those who believe on the gospel are God's people, and those are the people that God sent to save from the foundation of the world. <laughs> see, so both sides see why this is the most hotly debated topic in the Word of God. So they go hand in hand. The people that believe in free will, 
The people are also the people that believe that we're not eternally secure. Now, I believe in free will. The, well, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the people that believe in predestination and determinism believe that we are eternal, eternally secure and there's nothing we can do to either be saved or lose our salvation. It's all determined before the foundation of the world. Now, Amen. I believe it's either one or the other here, <laughs> folks. That's why this issue is so hotly debated. We are bringing to you the scriptures. We have brought to you probably 50 scriptures here that you can dissect, okay, that you can go through and come up to your with your own uh, determination, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, you are going to have to see uh, which one of us has the correct view on this. Because it's not in the middle, I promise you that. It's not in the middle. There's no fence on this thing. You are either eternally secure, or you are not eternally secure. You're working for it, or you're not. And it's, I don't believe that. It's not works you're versus faith. There's, there's faith on both sides. A person has to continue in the faith. Okay, and over here, I believe it's less a person having faith, and it's more God just sovereignly protecting them. And it's not based upon faith, whereas over here, I believe it is based upon faith. It's about grace alone, faith alone, meaning your faith in Christ will want you to serve God because there is no uncor uncorruptible fruits that are being made. Once you're saved by God and truly are saved, you will look to do the things of God. You look to seek God, follow God, look for Him, not because of your own works, not because of your own and admiration and things like that, you become more atoned to the things of God. And you want to do the things of God. Amen. Why? Because it's not your will anymore. It's God's will for your life. God prepared the fish for Jonah when? Mm -hmm. Before the foundation there of the go. world. That's the sovereignty of God. It's the sovereignty of God. So, when did he make that? Before just the just, of just the world. to conclude this, we both believe in the sovereignty of God. The question is, how is it administered? And how are we to respond to the message of the gospel? Because I believe man has to respond correctly to the message of salvation. There is in the gospel a responsibility for man. <laughs> and that's really the conclusion of this. You're going to have to come up with your own determination of it. Amen? Amen. God bless. Jesus God bless loves you. you guys. Jesus is Lord. Have a good one. Yes. Don't work for your salvation. <laughs> <laughs>